Hello and uh, welcome to our other class of web programming for advanced students. Uh, in today's class, we are going to continue with where we stopped at in the pre in where we stopped at in the previous video. We are going to take sixty minutes for this class, and uh, by the end of sixty minutes, uh, at least we should have learned something new. So before we proceed, I'm going to teach you how to use github so that uh, I should be able to monitor your progress also github will help you as uh, developers to control your source code in case you lose your computer you should be able to restore your source code and uh, very many very 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 many other advantages of using github so collaboration and the rest so if you're a serious developer you must be knowing at least a single version control system that you can use to be to be storing and controlling your what your source code so i found it very important uh to teach you how to use github so since you're already advanced student it means that you already know ba a lot of basics so i'll not take you again step by step but i'm going to show you uh, very important steps that you may need to take in order to create github such as that after this class, when I give you assignment or something to do, you will be able to create uh, those projects and uh, create GitHub, GitHub repositories and add me as the contributor so that I should be able to trace and follow if you're really doing stuff or you're just uh, here trying to see if <laughs> or you're just watching and not practice. So GitHub will help me to, to, to really tell that uh, you guys are doing stuff or not. Of course, it also help you to motivate yourself uh, to see that you have something to present to me so that's the way to go so without wasting much time i'll show you how you can create an account on github so to create an account on github what you do you go to your browser and then go to google and then search GitHub. so the very first search result will be for what for github itself github.com so you click on github.com and then you'll see a place where you can do what you can uh, create an account my laptop is, my computer is in dark mode so things may look a little bit different but still even if you use light mode still get things in um. okay let me first switch from dark mode to light mode because it may confuse some of you okay so this is how github will look like now if you if for me i'm already logged in but if you're not logged in it will look like this here i'm incognito just go to github.com if you're not logged in stuff will look like this okay they'll look like this okay so here i uh, will have to create an account if you're not you don't have an account just click on sign up eh? Let me pick this one. I'm in class. Eh? I'm in class. We'll talk later. Eh? Please, please, please. Okay. So you have to sign up. To sign up, we'll create an account like this one. Eh? You just put an email. Everything here is just straightforward. Put an email. After putting an email, you put your password and then they send you an email for verification. In your in your in your in your in your in your, in your, in your inbox, you go and verify the email and then sign in so account creating uh, account creation on github is really really straightforward if you don't have one if you already have one just simply click on sign in and then they ask you to enter your email and password then you will have an account what on github so after having an account on github the next thing you do you log in and once you log in on github this is how you'll see things okay this is how you see things in fact when you log in github this is how things will look like so everything that you'll be creating on github new folders we call them repositories so you just simply come to what to repositories just come to home and then click on new repositories you'll see it here when you click on new repositories then they'll ask you to create a what a new repository so i'm going to create a new repository where i'm going to save my project of laravel okay 
remember previously we created in a fresh project called uh, eugenius24 so i'm going to push it uh, so that it should be here on github okay so what i'm going to, what am i going to do i'm going to just simply put here the name of my repository so i'm going to call it eugenius24 so i'm creating a repository so creating a repository is just like creating a, a, a copy of your source code you see my source code is here is in the computer so but i want to create for it a copy uh, on what on github so after i have logged in i click on create new repository the word is very is is once you log in you'll see it very clearly create new repository so after doing that you do like this you give here the name of your repository i call it genius 24 why because that's the local thing that i use just on my computer so after doing that the next thing you can give the description of what of your repository you can give it here then after doing that uh you just simply click on create project okay i'm going to keep it public if you keep it public it means that uh, even another person can access it eh, and look at your code so i'm keeping it public so that you guys you can even simply come to my github account which is eugene used to learn it with muhindo you can see here just search on, on the internet learn it with muhindo github you'll see it you see if you just simply come here also when you create you as well so uh, be available on that on uh, on internet you see learn it with muhindo github can you see it's there straightforward here i think here. I don't know. Okay, if you come to GitHub eh, and just simply search here, this is not me. Learn it with Mohindo. Like this, you'll be able to see my account. It's not popular, it's still very new. See, learn it with Mohindo here. Just type as one word, you'll be able to see my account. So if you're in public and you click on my account, and then you click on repositories here you'll be able to see my repositories eh? so why because one is public this one so i'm going to create another repository so a repository is just like a project so i'm creating a new project the way i'm going to push my github of what i mean my my source code of laravel so i'm going to call it eugenius and for why am i calling it like that because the new project that i created so after doing that i'm going to click on create a repository so when i click on create a repository I'll have something like this okay but it means that uh, my repository has been created but there is no any code that has been saved in this repository so if i come here to my repositories all repositories that i click and i refresh you see i have now the second repository there this one so i have two this and this one so in this one i'm going to put there my what my project you see there's nothing so far there is nothing i think you can see that very clearly how there is nothing now what i'm going to do i'm going to to push to push there my what my source code i'm going to push my source code from my local computer i'm going to get the, the local source code that i have in my computer and i push it here so that i should have a copy on github to do that i need two things i need first of all to install github on my computer git and github on my personal computer and then after doing that i'll be able to communicate with my personal computer with the what with the this online version with this internet i'm um, with the with the web of github so this is my computer so i'm going to add my github software so to add the github software in your computer you can uh, simply just search download github for windows if you're using windows then the first link will see it there straightforward click on that and then you'll see the link but because i'm using mac os that's why i see i see here download for mac os so if you're using windows still you can just find it it will automatically tell you download for windows so if i want for windows see still it is here for me eh? so if you're using windows go for windows if you're using ubuntu still i'll show you for ubuntu so download that stuff download the uh, what download the uh, github and install it downloading and install it and installing it is really really straightforward download click after download click on install and click next 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 when they ask you um, uh, add github command line say yes and then you click next 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 and once you do that it will be done it will really be done okay and then you'll have github on your computer 
you can as well also download git just git eh? so to download git this is a command line this one eh? just simply click here click to directly download git one here so this one will be a command line that will help you go ahead and download this one this one is for com i already have it eh? so this one in case you want to use a command line this one will help you so download those two things and install them and the steps are really really straightforward okay so after installing those two softwares then you'll be able to have something like this you'll be able to have something like this go to your computer and then click on and search i mean my computer and i mean sorry go to my old programs and search click on start and then search github then you'll be able to have something like this so if you don't have anything open it will be just something like this one okay so this will be um it will be uh a project eh? it's going to be a project i mean it's going to be a software that's going to connect your computer with the github github you know it is on internet eh? so this software will help you to connect your local files on your computer with what with github so what we're going to do right now we are going to connect this github with my with our software with with i mean this local my this local github this software that we just downloaded for github we are going to connect it with what with uh, our account that we just created for git this is how it looks like so to do that just simply click on git and then click on file i mean click on uh, options in, if you're using windows i find the word file then go to settings for for mac we have preferences but for windows find the word settings eh? click on settings and then click on sign in or click on add account so when you click on add account it will ask you let me sign out and i show you how the stuff is done so if i'm not logged in i'll just simply come to github or oh, and click on what on uh, you have to install also command line tool in case you don't have it in case they ask you for command line tool just go ahead and install it but for me i already have it eh? so i don't need it so there so just simply come to file and then click on uh, preferences if you're using windows click on settings then here give where there is github.com okay account github.com click on account then github.com then click on sign in okay so when you click on sign in then say continue with the browser that's the best way so if you say continue with the browser they'll give you they'll take you to your computer i mean to your browser to your internet browser to your go chrome and remember when your browser already signed in so it will just take you to the com computer you accept and after accepting they bring you back here so if you again come here to if you again come to if you again come to 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 to, to, to settings you'll find that you're already signed in can you see i'm now signed in so after making sure that i'm signed in so the next thing is going to be you see i just created a what a repository for this new project that we are doing for laravel project so the next thing is going to to me for me is the, the next thing for me is going to be to to be to connect this project eh? to connect this project with my local uh soft with my local let me repeat the next thing after i've logged in successfully the next thing I'm, is going to be for me the next thing for me is going to be to connect this online project that i just created which does not have anything with my local what with my local project so to connect to that I'll just simply come to my account and come to the project that I've just created, which is this one. And then I click on this link, copy this link. You can even copy this one. Eh? After copying that link, make sure you copy it properly. You can even click on this anywhere. After copying that link properly, come to your account here, to your GitHub software. Then on GitHub software, click on file and then click on new repository. Okay. Or you can click on clone, 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 clone clone repository so when you click on clone repository if you're already logged in they'll even give you a list of your of your of your repositories that you already have okay so if you click on refresh they'll give you a list of uh, the repositories that you already have that you want to clone but if you want to use url just simply click on the link here in url and then paste here the link that we just copied from the other side the link here the link i repeat the link for the project not the link for the whole account the link for the project you see i first click on the repository and then on the project itself then i copy this link here okay then i paste it here 
click on link and then paste it here so the next thing they're going to ask you where do you want to save this uh, repository locally where do you want to save this repository locally so i want to save it i will have to select a folder now so for me i always put my things in a github folder things of github i put them in github folder so i'll just simply come to this one uh I let me come again after putting the link the next thing they're going to ask you now okay now which which what is your folder on computer on localhost that you want to connect with this github project so that's the next thing that i have to do so i have to create a folder so for me i already created a folder on my desktop but you can put it on your in any side on any in your, any on any disk you can put on c you can put on d but for me I already have it on desktop so I just simply click on I, I create this folder called github but you can use any word eh? so this folder of github it is here and uh, every month i create for a new folder for my new projects but you can also organize things in your own way for example right now we are in july so i create 2022 underscore 04 so when you enter in may i create another folder 2022 underscore 05 so all projects that i start in may i'll put them in that folder so all projects that I'm going to start in July, I'll be putting them in this folder. I said I have one project there. So I put them in this folder. So that one will just help me to organize my code. And if I want to trace my projects, I can know while they are all organized. You see, for example, after two years while I'm using this way of organizing things, I can know the project that I started in a particular year, in a particular month. So that's how I organize my stuff. But you can also find your own way how to organize you as a so after creating that folder so i'm going to say this folder should be cloned to what to my new folder i mean to, to the folder that i just created so to do that i'll after i put the link after putting the link <laughs> after putting the link hello appeal after putting the link the next thing is going to be uh to choose a folder where this where my local stuff will be stored eh? so to do that i'm going to click on choose folder you see choose folder so i just choose i i come to my desktop wherever your folder is github then the folder of this month it is here i just do the that, that, that folder the folder of this month after choosing it and then i say okay select you'll see they propose for me the name for the new project which is matching with the link that i have this name will leave it so it's going to be under desktop github the month and then this name that they have proposed which is regions and for and i'll leave it because they are they are almost the same though you can modify it but for me i'm going to leave it like that so after doing that i'm going to say clone so it's going to process and then it's going to clone so once it says the successfully cloned what does it mean it means that my folder this folder that is under here github and uh, 2004 i mean this you see there is new flood that has been, has been created we did not have this folder so it means that this folder even though you don't see stuff there you will not, don't see anything it has been connected with what with github so any change that i make here and i commit and i push if you don't understand the word committing and push you're going to explain them so it means that any if i add here any file i commit and push <coughs> that file will be saved on my what on my github website on my github uh, online version so it means that i can collaborate with many people uh, other people can just simply pull i'll explain what's meant by pull other people can just simply pull my project in their computers <coughs> and start and get my source code and then they start writing anything that can contribute to the project and then they push so when they push i can confirm their changes and we'll be able to have like even 20 people contributing to a single what to a single project who, by through the using that if you're a little bit confused don't worry just follow steps as i'm doing you'll understand as you're really practicing eh? so after doing that now the next thing is going to be uh for me to uh to 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 add my my project in this folder so this is the project is here under github under uh <coughs> under this one so if you don't have a laravel project if you don't have a Laravel, but for me i already have a laravel project but still i can create a new one 
so let me go ahead and create a new one uh, so that we can again start afresh okay so to create a new project i'm going now to launch my what my command line so my command line it can also be your cmd in windows eh? so this is my command line so according to the previous class i say that at least before you end the previous class you should be able to add to run this uh, command called composer this command you should be able to run this command composer you see if you tap that composer if you run that you should be able to get these things if you cannot get that stuff then mean that you still you still have to go back and do what and learn how to install composer try 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 view so many different videos in case you fail try and try and try and try and try because you're not the first person to do it you already <laughs> you're not the first person to install it eh? We already have them in what in our computers so i just tell you what to do you have to install composer so even though you fail 10 times keep on trying until you have it in your computer why you're not the first person to install it so it's not magic it's not something new it's not that it cannot work on your computer it must work on each computer so go ahead and install composer you have to install a uh, zamp or you have to install zamp after installing zamp then you go ahead and install composer so if you cannot install composer you maybe have tried it 20 times and fail then come to me i can help you still no problem after trying 20 times and you give me proof that you tried it 20 times you failed searching from youtube searching from google and you failed then come to me i will ask you for the proof of trying 20 times if you really fail then i'll help you to install composer so i repeat uh you should be able to open your terminal or your command line for those who are using windows for those who are using windows eh? if you open your command line you should be able to run this word and i elaborated in the previous class you'll be able to run the word composer and then if you run composer composer like this you should be able to get stuff like that if you cannot get that then you have to learn how to install composer from my previous videos also from other teachers but do your best to install composer as i'm saying you're not the first one to install so it is not magic or not something you need so once you have composer installed in your computer eh? so what we are going to do we are going to create our our project eh? here in github this one we are going to project create our project here in new genius 24 here 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 so we're going to create our project so uh right now you should be at least knowing how to navigate through the using command line if you cannot know still you'll have to know because you're here to know so you should be able to navigate through folders so if you want to know the folder that you're in if you want to know the folder that you're in right now you just simply write pwd i hope you guys have somewhere to note don't be coming in class without anywhere to note eh? be just like going in a garden without what without a hole so if you write pwd it will tell you the path where you are right now so if i write pwd and press enter you see i'm under users under mac but i should be able to to come here uh to my to my desktop and then and then i navigate to this to 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 github and then i navigate to to this math so how can i know the folders you see here i see things only in black and white so how can i know the folders that are here right now if you want to know the folder that are here just write ls i don't know what ls stands for but what i know it lists the folders so here i'll see the li you'll see a list of files and folders of where you are right now so i can get at least now is a, a a a clue that even the desktop folder is here okay so after having the desktop folder what am i going to do i'm going to navigate to that desktop folder because i know my github folder is on desktop so to do that i'll just simply say cd cd means change directory so i'm going to say change directory to what to desktop you see like that so just write the word the two f the first three letters of a desk that you want to navigate i'm um, of a folder that you want to navigate to and then press the tab key the remaining word will be um suggested so if i press enter now i'm on desktop if i write let me clear the screen to clear the screen in on windows just write cls it will clear the screen eh? so if i write pwd now i'll be able to see that i'm on what i'm on desktop so if i write ls i should be able to see even my github folder you can see my github folder is here so i'm going to navigate this github folder 
So to navigate CD GitHub, you see, there we are. So if I write LS, I should be my two folders. Eh? Can you see the folder of uh, I, I the, those many folders that we have? You see, two thousand two. I mean, two thousand twenty-two. This the ma February March month, and the April month, and some other project that I had put on top there. So what am I going to do? I'm going to navigate to this one, eh? Because this is where we put our GitHub. This is where we connect our GitHub, eh? So I'm going to say CD uh, 202204, right? So if I do like that, and write P PWD, I should be able to see the folder that I'm in. So if I write LS, I should be able to see that there are two folders. There is Flutter Components and Eugenius24. So I want to navigate this Eugenius24 because it is where we connected this Eugenius24 with what? With the repository on GitHub. So I'm going to clear this screen by pressing Ctrl K on Mac for Windows CLS. So let me navigate to that folder, CD, and then I'm going to say Git, I mean, sorry, UGNews24, that one. Then press Enter. Then I, um, if I write PWD, I can be sure that I'm in this folder. Others, if you want to go backwards, just write CD and then dash dash and a forward slash. You'll be go, you'll go backward. Eh? You'll like jump out of that folder. Right now, if I write LS, you see, I'm now on top of that folder. So if I write again CD, June 24, so and uh, right, I say LS, there's nothing there. But write PWD and then there is this folder. So it means that I'm now sure I'm in this folder. There's another way to do it, but uh, this is the best way so that you should understand how to navigate through folders. So now, after making sure that I'm there, now what next am I going to do? I'm now going to create my, my project of what? Of, 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 of UG News. Okay, I'm going to create a fresh project using Composer command. A Laravel project. I'm going to create a Laravel project. So create a Laravel project. Come just and search this command. Even me, I don't know it in the head. <laughs> But I know it exists, okay? So Laravel create project command. I know it exists, but I don't memorize it. Guys, guys. <laughs> mm. uh, you should install this plugin if you're using Google Chrome. I'm finding it useful, eh? It is called uh, code. It's called Grepper. Grepper. Please try it. I've found it. I've started finding it useful. You see, I search something. It just gives me the answer, without even, without even uh, suffering. Can you see? It give me the command without suffering. It's called Grepper. Just go to your Chrome and then search Grepper plugin. Grepper extension. Grepper Chrome extension. This guy. You see, it will help you to get the source codes very simply. You see, I just search. It helps me and get for me the code. So if I want to use this code again, I can just simply click on add on grepper. Then next time I'll just simply maybe Laravel create new project command. So I save it. So next time I, I want this problem, it will just be there you see it's beautiful so try to 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 install this grepper it's really good i'm finding it very helpful for programmers so it it helps you from coming with search from websites and what the answer is there straightforward but if you don't have it it's also okay and if you don't want it it's also okay but please try to install this grepper it's really i'm finding it useful eh? grepper chrome extension so if you don't have if you don't have it you just simply see here the first search results. You'll see a command for creating Laravel project. It is here. What is it? Where is it? Okay, it is here. No. Go ahead, this one. It is here. You see? Even you can even everywhere Grepa sees a command, it is the icon is there. I mean everywhere where Grepa sees a what? Um uh everywhere where is Grepa sees a source a, a source code, it, its icon is there. So if you see this a source code anywhere, you can still add it in your Grepa and then 
use it later you see so it's really, really nice so i'm going to copy this command for creating new project okay so i'm going to copy it and then come to my command line but before i come into my command line i, may, I have to make sure that this project this command is okay so how should i do that i'm going to at least have somewhere to paste it first before i run it for me let's first paste my stuff before i run it you can open a text pad or anywhere for me i've just opened here some notepad and i'm going to paste there the command before i run it i first make sure that the command is okay because some commands always come with the enter and then they just run something that you don't want to so the command is the command is composer create dash project laravel stroke laravel and then the name of the project so the name of the project i'm going to call it what ug news 24 ug news 24 okay so after doing that i'm going to cut you see i'm going to copy because i'm now sure of my what of my command it is now okay it's just composer create project laravel stroke laravel then the name of your project now after making sure that you're in a github project github folder where you want things to be then paste there your command or you can even write it composer create dash project laravel stroke laravel eugene 24 or the name of your project okay so you, this name should be simple don't put spaces so you will make you the one of your choice if you're making an e-commerce website make that one if you're making a news website make that one okay because we're going to use this one to line along so i'm going to press enter and then the creation of my project will start so they're creating the project so it may take a minute eh? these guys even put with stand with the ukraine see that <laughs> Less, less things so it has successfully what installed uh my project okay so that's beautiful okay so the next thing is for me now to go and see if this project is there so i'll come to my folder which is here then click on this one you see the folder is here okay the folder is here but i uh, see now we have two folders we have this one of uh, so if i enter here have that one and you enter there have another one and I enter there have another one because we created things twice uh, i would like to have all of them on the top folder okay so after creating the folder it doesn't matter i'm going to enter inside here you see i have two folders i have one for github and inside that of github i have the one that i've that laravel i just created so what i'm going to do i'm going just going to enter here and remove these these things that laravel i just created and i put them on top eh? so to do that i'll just simply say Control a and I copy them. After copying them, I'm going to paste them here. I come on top of this folder here. Let me show you. We have two folders. So we have I've opened two comma two files. So we have this one, eh? This one that GitHub just created for us. GitHub created for us this one inside this. Okay? But Laravel has also created this one. So what should we do? What I'm going to do, I'm just going to enter into this one that I, Laravel I just created. Select everything and drag and drop it. Drag and drop it in the one that GitHub created. Okay. Then uh, this one is now empty. I can now delete it. But it's optional. You can leave it the way it was. But for me, I find it cool. I can have now a single folder. Okay. So after having that, now the next thing. Uh, let us try to run our folder. I mean, let us try to run. Let before we even run it. Before we even run it, let's first open this source code in my Visual Studio, and see if uh, everything is okay. So to open this source code in Visual Studio, we can just simply drag and drop it in Visual Studio, or just press Control, Control O, and then I'm going to navigate where my project is. Okay, it's under what? Under GitHub. And um, 2024, and I Eugenius 24. There, so this is the whole the project. Then I say open. So my project will be opened in what? In um, in, uh, in 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 Visual Studio Code. So now the next thing is to push it. 
we have to push it to our version control. Eh? We have to push it to our version control before we even proceed. So to push it to our version control or to GitHub, now you have to go back to what? To our GitHub software. Okay. So if I come to my GitHub software and this project is selected, you see I can switch the projects from here. You can even multiple you can have even, even have multiple projects. Eh? So I switch the project to this one. So you can see now that there are a lot of changes that have just been created in this project. Okay almost 7,000 files that have not been saved on my internet or to my GitHub uh, to my GitHub account. So I'm going to commit these changes. To commit these changes, committing means like you yes, 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 I'm 100% sure I'm the one who did this one and I confirm. So that's what you call committing. And every committing, every committing you have to write it, to give it a name or a comment. So let us give this comment. Comment. Uh, I can just say first change. Okay. So after doing that, and then you click on what? On commit to main. So it will process for the first time. It can take a minute, and then it has finished. So after finishing, now you have to publish this one. So make sure that you're connected to internet. Publishing means that you're now sending this stuff to what? To your internet. To your to your web. For example, if I come to my Laravel, I mean to my to my project on internet, can you see? It does not have anything. It does not have anything. Why? Because we have not sent to it anything. So we are going to send it to it something. So after committing, you go and say publish. So publish this branch. It's going to take a minute. You see it here it is uploading. So here it is change. It is uploading uh, my project to what? To GitHub. So it may take a minute and you should make sure you're connected to internet. And the good part here, when we change a file, it will be only uh, submitting the part that has been changed. So it has done what? It has finished, which is beautiful. So if you come to my project on GitHub here, if I refresh, I should be able to see this. So beautiful. See? So you should be able at least to reach that point. If you reach that point, then I can know, um, I can be sure that, okay, you're doing something. So after doing that, now how am I going? How is this going to help us? It's going to help me to know that you guys are doing something or not. So after doing that, the assignment that I'm going to give you is to do exactly what I've done today. So after doing that, you have to invite me so that I should be able to trace your project or even contribute where necessary. The thing is, I can even contribute and I send you the what the project. So when you pull, you can get those changes. So the th next thing you have to do is to add me, is to add me as a contributor to your project. So to add me as a contributor to your project, simply come to settings, click on settings. After clicking on settings, click on collaborators. You see, everything is really straightforward. Collaborators, you can see it. Click on collaborators. After clicking on collaborators, they will ask you to confirm with your password. So enter a password again to confirm because they don't want uh, anyone to add themselves without your permission. So I click on collaborators and then you'll be able to see add uh, add people. So I click on add people and enter my email or enter my account. So I'll give you my email. My email is UG News with Z. UG News with Z. News24 at gmail.com. Okay. UG News24 at gmail.com. That's my account. Oh, oh. I'm the I'm the owner, <laughs> so I cannot invite myself. <laughs> okay, so you have to add there my account like that. Or you just search learn it with Mohindo. Like that, eh? So by doing like that you'll be able to add me. But I am the owner because <laughs> because I cannot I cannot add it myself. So let me add my other account. So to add my other account, I have another account called Mobahood. So I click on Mobahood, you can see. I have some mobile hoods here. So search line through the window, you'll be able to see me with my logo of Eugene's 24, a red one. So if I click here, I'll be able to add this guy to this project. So I'm inviting this guy. So that's, that's, that's what you're going to do. Do that or CDK. After doing that, then you'll have done your part. So I'll have to confirm and then what next? I'll, we'll have to discuss in the coming classes. So that's how we do stuff. So that's beautiful. So if I come to my guitar, I mean, if I come to my, to my what, to my, to my what, <laughs> to my Visual Studio Code, eh? I should be able to see what.
to see these changes. I should be able to see these changes. I should be able to see my source code. So my whole source code is there and the copy is on GitHub. So everything is beautiful. Even though I lose my computer, I have somewhere to start from the whole code. A copy of it has been saved here. So that's great. And uh, another person can contribute to my code. That's nice. So make sure that you reach that point. So GitHub, you can just use this one to update. When you have some changes, we just commit and update. For example, if I come here to my to my what to my public folder. No, no, no. Let me come to my routes and then click on uh, web, and I can come here on top and say, uh, "This is a simple, simple change." Why am I making this change? I'm making it here to web and I save. After saving, GitHub will, and I come back to GitHub, you'll find GitHub already crying. It's a hey, 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 hey. You already have something that you have has changed in your files and they'll tell you with a green color here. But you have not done what? You have not saved this stuff. You have not committed it. So what should I do? I have to commit it. I can say, okay, a new change. I can write anything. Then I commit. After committing, they say, hey, you have committed, yes, but you have not push. Push means to update the online version. Okay? You have not updated the online version. So, okay, okay. I say, okay, push. So, I say push. That means that they are going to update the what? The online version. So, if I come online here, I refresh. I should be able to see that there are something that has been updated in 22 seconds ago. So, if I come to where I changed, you know where I, I changed? I changed this file. This is the web, eh? So what did I change? I changed the file here under, under what? Under routes, under, 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 under API, under, under web. So you can see now there is new change. This is a simple change. And did it take a minute? No, it was very, very fast. So when I'll be giving you assignment, I'll be just giving you assignment. I say you do. When you finish, push. So when you push, for me, this side, I'll be able to see your code. From my VS code, I'll just pull your code. And when I pull your code, I'll have exactly the same thing in my VS code. So you'll have something like this on your side. When I pull your code, I'll have exact thing also in my VS code on my side. Any change you commit there and push, my, 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 my task will be just to pull. When I pull, I'll be able to get that update. So you cannot lie to me that you're doing something. Yet you're not doing. So that's how I'm going to monitor your progress. It's not only for monitoring. This one, this thing is going to also help you, you know, when you start doing real world application, when you're collaborating with what? With many people on the same project. So it's really beautiful. Make sure you understand it. So now let me show you another thing. I can as well uh, edit. So if I edit this thing from another bro from another computer, so you, a web is like another computer, of course. Okay. So let me edit this thing from web and I save it and we see what will happen. So I'll just simply come and click on edit. So I already have permission. Uh, let me just add another comment. Yeah. This is another change from another PC bracket web. So this one is coming from web. So I just make this change from the internet. So this one can be my computer and I change from this side and I push. So let us see. So let me save. Uh, maybe I can say from web. I put commit from web. Just commit and changes. So I've changed something from web. So you see, this is from web. But it, so what does it mean? It means that the online version is not what? I mean, the local version is not updated. So if, when I come to my local version, I'll just simply click on fetch here. It will refresh and will tell you there is something new. So what is there is something new? Can you see? There is something new. There is one commit that was made from another computer. So it can be from my computer. It can be from a computer from your colleague. They just committed, but your, your computer is, has not updated. So what is your task now? If you click on fetch, they will ask you to pull. I've, in fact, I've just clicked on pull. So pull, what does pull mean? Pulls mean... Uh, not pull for ladies, eh? <laughs> pull means uh, fetching the stuff from internet or from the online version to your what? Your computer. So if you go to another computer, 
you just log in and then pull so when you pull it will just get all the changes from internet and then update your local version so what does it mean if i now come to my vs code can you see vs code this has been updated i did not type it from here but you can see it has automatically updated itself which is really beautiful so you can have 20 people working on the same project five people two people work on the same project and when you when they update you just simply pull when you pull your local version is already updated and you even have version you even have ability to do what to go backwards so that's it and uh, then the last thing that i would like to show you even vs code supports github so even though you don't install uh, even though you don't install this uh visual studio i mean this github though i recommend it still you can use vs code to handle everything about github so to use vs code just simply come and click on this account so i'm going to log in my with my github account so click there and then say github so here i can sign out if i want to oh i didn't want to sign out but mm, i don't want to sign out let me leave it <laughs> so in simple terms just simply click here and then click sign in eh? i don't want to sign out because uh I have a reason so just click on uh, sign in okay let me sign out and i show you how stuff are done so i sign out so when you don't have an account when you're not logged in to be like this eh? so click on this user person and then click on uh, sign in with github eh? click there sign in with github so when you click on sign in with github it will take you to github it will launch the browser and then say i authorize uh -huh. continue just say i authorize so when you authorize git uh, visual studio code what does it mean it means that you can now even pull some changes and make some changes with your what using your project let me demonstrate that now i'm in vs code i can now say put another comment this is a change from vs code save after saving that i'll just simply come to you see now when i save that once i'm logged in you'll see something here will count so what does it count mean this one this icon stands for github so this github this icon stands for github that means that this one i'll be uh, there's some change that i've not what i've not committed so you can do a lot of things as this one guy is counting for you files that have been changed but have not committed so when you finish after a session of your programming maybe you start programming at 8 p.m you program up to midnight up to 12 so after 12 you you've finished so when you finish don't leave your computer before you commit and push your changes because anything can happen you have to before you leave your computer make sure that you commit and push your changes so after i've done that i have changed multiple files see like this one so i'll have to simply come to come here and click here so if you're not signed in they'll ask you to sign in eh? so after clicking there they will tell me a file that has been changed you can see it is here so what do i need i need to commit and push so i just write here my commit message okay maybe from vs and then click enter when i, I mean click on this check this tick eh? click on this one to process it has finished so what after doing that so i've finished committing and it's no longer counting so after committing i have to push so to push here they click click on that sync so i click it will push and pull eh? so it will sync boom it's okay so it will sync oh, this guy is talking about again i think i'm i'm not using the right account yeah i'm not logged in i don't really the right account okay so it is syncing I'm using the wrong account. So once finish is syncing, you'll just simply come to your GitHub and you'll be able to get your what? Your changes. So it means that you may not need even what? The GitHub software. Even VS Code can do everything for you. VS Code can as well do everything for you. So that is how we use VS Code. So we, before we, pro, we end our today's class, basically I was just teaching you uh github and how to use it and how you need and why you need it so i can as well push from this software so before we end our today's class the next thing i want to show you 
is um, is now how to run your Laravel project. So to run your Laravel project, once you have uh, uh, you have uh, submitted your once you have submitted, I mean once you have uh, installed your uh, VS Code, I mean once you have installed you installed your composer. So the next thing is to run this project, okay? So to run this project, there are two ways. One way you can run it from uh, the command line, okay? Here, another way you can run it from VS Code itself. So if you want to run it from the command line, eh, just simply come to the command line, okay? So make sure that you're in the right folder where your project is. I'm sure my project is here. If I write PWD, my project is here. So if I write ls i can see these chinese things eh bootstrap json what 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 so i'm sure i'm in the root folder of my project now i want to run it so i can see it executing so to run it just write um php artisan like this artisan like this eh? yes. write php rt Sun. I hope that's the correct spelling. Artisan, yeah, and then serve like that. PHP artisan serve. So when you do like that, it's going to create for us a temporary server for our project. So it has finished. So once you see this green thing and this link, so this is where the, our project is going to be hosted. So copy that link, and then simply, or you can just simply press Control and click on that link. So I'm going to copy that link. Okay. After copying it, come to your browser. Google Chrome or whatever browser you're using, paste it there, press enter. You can see that uh, my project is there running. I'm seeing error. Okay. Seeing some error, I don't know why. So copy that. Test it. So that's my project still running. Server error. I think there's some error here with my source code save. Come and refresh. I don't know what's causing this error. Maybe I did not copy some files properly. Okay. So that's it. So if you want to stop it, just press Ctrl and C. Ctrl and C to stop. Okay, CLS still clear. I mean, okay. Let me run my previous project. So that's how you run your project. Eh? I think when I copied the code, there's something that I don't copy. Yeah, I don't copy dot inv. I've just seen it. New file dot inv like this. Eh? I don't copy this file. That's the problem of copying things. So this file has some stuff that I have to be there. I just come and search here Laravel dot inv file. There's always an example here, and the example was not copied. So this file it will be somewhere here. Or is it? So the let me I have to generate that in file. Hmm. Let me just copy this one. No. Okay, this file was lost when I was doing that. When I was uh, copying my folder, let me just open. Let me just get a, an existing file of .inf. That's why my project is not running. I guess I already have this file. <laughs> so when you copy, make sure that you copy everything. But because of security of Mac, it does not copy files that start with full stop. Because of security. So I save. Now let me come and refresh. 
okay let us run it again okay php at sunserve there we are copy that link come to the browser paste it beautiful should be able to get that wow i'm becoming good in laravel so you should be able to get that in your first project okay in your first project you should be able to get that okay so in simple terms today that's what we have learned mainly uh let me finish the remaining minutes in the that's what we have learned in the fact so make sure that before next class you should have this running on your computer whether it makes sense doesn't make sense just make sure before next class you should have this stuff running on your computer so in next class we'll have to look at now what is meant by routes what is meant by controllers what is meant by views and the rest so if you want to do good for yourself watch the previous video watch our today's video do the task that i'm going to give you and make sure that you submit in time and then uh, by next class we'll be able to start from there if you don't give up you really learn cool stuffs so if i stop this one just press ctrl c to stop it eh? ctrl and then c then uh, if you want to run it from uh, command line i mean vs code command line you see here i can commit so if i want to learn it from vs com code command line if you don't want to go back to the terminal you can still run it from terminal just simply come here to terminal new terminal you'll have it here in bottom eh? so once you have to new terminal if you want to close it totally to stop it click on delete if you want to minimize it just click on this one eh? and if you want to expand it just press uh control control and the tilde the button press control and hold it and then the button under um, the escape key we call tilde then you'll be able to do that so let us run it so if i say p wd you see the path uh uh vs code automatically opens the path of the project where it is so i don't need to navigate so what i do i just run to my command php artisan serve so by doing like that also vs code will be able to do the same thing so if i just click there it will, it will be able to run my project so up to the next class you should be able to do up to this level and uh we'll stop from there for today unless there is a question so make sure that uh, at least before next class you should be able to reach that level and that is um before thursday before thursday you should have reached that level uh for me i can uh, i can do what i can take you to the river but i won't force you to do what to drink so that's it for today members and uh in case there is any question you can ask if there's no any question I ca uh, we are free to leave but uh if you want to learn more just come to youtube so you can you are even free to learn ahead just simply after installing laravel and you do it just come to youtube and search to be good for yourself even from other teachers as well laravel for beginners uh, just like how bobby wine said this world is like a self-service eh? the food is already there can you see the food so you serve yourself at one so if you can learn until midnight if you can learn until 3 p.m it is up to you but content is already there me is just to show you the path and uh, giving you basics but learning more it is up to you so come you see that is four hours time you cannot tell me that you can watch you may watch this four hours video while following while trying with what i've given you to get started and then you come out with nothing that's that is really hard so after i've given you this after you have run up to this level after i've run this level go ahead and start exploring from videos from other teachers and then even from what from documents just search laravel tutorial on google you'll see documents this tutorials point is very good very very good for notes in fact that's the one that i follow for not stop just just put your ass down and learn <laughs> just start following you see uh tutorials for laravel you these are the notes well well organized notes step one step two step three step four 
what is a controller so if you line up to controllers they by the next time in i come in class and talk about controllers you will have get the idea of what is meant by controllers that you will not be like new person so the content is there so it is up to you to sit down and learn or sit down and watch tiktok yes can not okay our time is up members uh, until we meet in the next class and i wish you a good night to everyone so i'll give the task do your best do do good to you and do the task uh, you have five here at least let me get all the five tasks done before the next class okay i wish you a good night until then unless there's a question eh? but you're free to leave now let me stop the recording